Scott Butterworth did a, a really good interview with J- uh, Jake Solomon, the lead on XCOM 2 and XCOM over at Firaxis. Uh, and he, in the aftermath of Mass Effect Andromeda, wanted to talk to him about why some AAA games are kind of like doomed to fail before they're released or why they are kind of... Uh, you know, going up against obstacles inherently. Um, Jake Solomon, I believe, is at GDC, was giving a speech about why failure is important in game development and how to learn from it. So Scott wanted to reach out about that and use, you know, Mass Effect as a time peg. And we all kind of wanted to talk about that. AAA development is kind of, uh, you know, an amorphous thing. It's hard to pin down. And uh, obviously, with publishers, with developers, there's a lot of money involved. And sometimes that is inherently at war with the creative pursuits of some developers. And we also kind of wanted to touch on... Uh, how fan input affects development. And again, if you want to go read this whole interview, Scott Butterworth did a great job talking to Jake Solomon. And uh, it's a great line of questioning. And uh, it's really insightful if you want to know more about a pretty prolific uh, AAA developer. Um, But yeah, I I don't know. I kind of wanted to, uh, this isn't really too concrete of a segment, but I wanted to talk to you guys about what you think, you know, in the aftermath of Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, I don't know. um, it's, it's interesting to like look at what failure even means for a AAA game because sometimes, even if it doesn't have critical reception, it still sells, it can sell really well. Like Andromeda sold yeah. a lot of copies. Yeah. And, but you know, critical reception, I think, overall was kind of disappointing. Um, I think it, you know, people are saying it's a, it's a fair game. It's good. A lot of people really like it. A lot of people dislike it. It's, uh, it's pretty polarizing, but I don't know. Uh, Michael, I don't know. What's your take on kind of just in general... What does it even mean to you know walk that tightrope between this publisher's aim of making money and uh, the developer trying to be you know have creative pursuits? Yeah, so there's one aspect I was kind of throwing around in my mind was the deadlines. Like the the pending pressure of a deadline has to like get something done, whether it's good or not, whether you as a creative like artist or whatever, like it doesn't really matter what you think of it. You have to make that deadline. And so I think that when developers reach a point where it's like, okay, these things, like we can ship this product with these things missing or with these um, like aspects rough and we'll patch it out later as long as we hit that deadline because it's not self uh, imposed. And when it's not self imposed, you can't like, it's harder, I imagine it's harder to be like, okay, we need like six more months before we push, push out a like a finished product. Yeah, because you're like beholden to the publisher. <clears throat> yeah, but the, the bigger problem though is that you're beholden to money because milestones are what these deadlines are actually referred to, okay. and there are many of them throughout development. And if you miss them, you will not get as you not get paid as much as a studio working for a publisher yeah. in some cases. So you can actually miss your deadline, but you just won't make money back. Oh, okay. So it's 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 partially the pressure the publisher is putting on the developer, but also the developer saying, we need this money to continue doing what we're doing and pay everyone and do everything that we expected to do on time. It's a weird mix of the two. Yeah, because Andromeda had development studio troubles kind of throughout its five years. The people that had previously worked on Mass Effect games or other Bioware projects left the studio. I know Mac Walters was there throughout the whole thing, and he was there for release. But a lot of people looked at it and said this might have been a case of EA just wanting to get this game out right before the end of their fiscal year. Yeah. So they would have made more money right. in that fiscal year. Yeah, I mean, sometimes no, it's not just like a like a one case scenario that like I'm describing. Like especially the publishing date, that's super important, right? Mm-hmm. But there are things that you have to hit like during the course of development that can. If, if they're not given the time and attention they need, you know, a year ahead of time, that's going to reflect in the end as well. Yeah. And also another thing is that, you know, post-release defining failure is that, you know, like same thing with No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky sold incredibly well, mm-hmm. but like what's the lasting impact of releasing that game is that, you know, by and large, you leave a bad taste in everyone's mouth. And then so when like when Hello Games wants to make another game or when Bioware comes out with their next project, you know, you have this aftermath, even though you sold your game, your previous game incredibly well and made a lot of money, um, you know, what's the, what's the effect on your future projects? Like, have you failed at that point or are you more doomed to fail at that point because of this reputation Mm -hmm. from your previous game? So, I mean, that's kind of more nebulous, I suppose, but that's one thing to think about too, as a consumer, when I, when a game comes out, I'm like, oh, what have they done in the past? What was their previous project like? Should I be invested in this? Yeah, I mean, that's a big determinant of uh, how excited I am for a game if I don't know the, like if it's a new IP, but I know this, the developer, or I know somebody who worked on, like not personally, I mean, but just I know their work. I'm like, oh, I really liked the way they wrote this character. I can't wait to see what they do with this game. Um, and the converse is true too, where if you get burnt by a developer, you just 
probably going to go into their next project a little more skeptical of it. Keiji Nafune comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing Jake Solomon had said, uh, Scott asked him if there's kind of a fear, uh, especially after Mass Effect Andromeda, because that was Bioware Montreal's first title as a collective studio. Of course, there were people there from earlier titles. But um, if there's a fear that your first failure could also be your last, and that might be what determines your, you know, like your career. Um, I had asked, I believe it was Richard Garriott, who used to work at uh, Looking Glass way back in the day, and then he did stuff at uh, Origin, and now he's at Portalarium down in Austin. And he's also like an astronaut and shit now because of <laughs> stuff he did back in the 90s. He, he essentially like established immersive sims with Warren Spector and Paul Newrath. But he was saying that, you know, there's that mantra that a developer is only as good at their last game, right? Like KGM Fune comes to mind too. Um, I don't know. I think the one, you know, we remember Recore, we remember Money Number 9. I, I think about that before I think about like the good Mega Man games now. Um, and then Scott had been asking Jake if that fear is there and Jake had been saying, yeah, it's kind of throughout development. You're trying to learn from failure, but also trying to push away the fear that it might sink you as a developer. And, uh, but then I want to look at more positive, uh, games as well. Uh, Kelly, you had mentioned Doom, Pete, you had mentioned Breath of the Wild for games that... Yeah. It seemed like, you know, the development studio, there's a lot of trust placed in them and they kind of just prioritize maybe different things than, I don't know, this might be reductive than EA might have with Mass Effect, for instance. Um, in terms of Breath of the Wild, how do you think that kind of is the antithesis to the negative side of AAA development? Um, well, I think that kind of boils down, you know, to a quote that uh, maybe Miyamoto has sort of, you know, instilled in a lot of people at Nintendo and he definitely has a lot of sway there. Um, it's, it's along the lines of, you know, a delayed game is eventually good. A rush game is bad forever, mm -hmm. right? So, like, they understand that if they publish something shitty, that will sort of be the legacy that is, that you guys were just talking about just now. Like, that will be the persistent legacy until they can fix that somehow, right? Mm -hmm. But now, like, with a great success like this, like, they will be able to earn people's favor much more easily down the road. So, yeah, delay this game a couple years to make sure that you can keep people on your good side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kelly, and then you mentioned Doom, right? Because Doom, Doom got delayed for a while, and then Doom came out. That was like one of the better yeah. games last year. One I of the best shooters in a while. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I Doom was, uh, the original was one of the first games I ever played, and uh, the thing about the new one um, was that it felt like they respected the legacy of Doom, but um, didn't f feel stuck on it. Like, it didn't feel like stuck in the past either. Like, mm -hmm. it was uh, a newer take on something that I loved when I was younger mm -hmm. and I just I thought they did a fantastic job with it and I thought it like a lot of people were like oh the music is really garish but um, I think it fits the spirit of doom like that just like over the top heavy metal like oh yeah we're gonna kill demons like I just adored that game so much and I loved finding the um, like I think the collectibles were really good and the uh, being able to find the um, 16 bit or whatever levels you mm -hmm. can go kind of find those little mini levels um, yeah. I just I, I loved so many things about that game, and I think it was better for the delay. Yeah, there's another interesting part of this Jake Solomon interview uh, in which he was, Scott asked him if, you know, when you see games in early access all the time and, uh, you know, kickstarted and these people are kind of, you know, like supposedly have a say in development, these fans, uh, Jake, or sorry, Scott was asking Jake, you know, at a certain point, is it more about the fans, what they want in a game, in a AAA game? Or is it more about what the developers want to push out? And then Scott asked uh, the question, you know, if it becomes all about the fans, is there the danger of making it a poorly designed game because fans might not have the same knowledge as developers and might not have the same, probably definitely don't have the same creative intent as the developers. Um, and then, you know, Pete, you had mentioned like a lot of times over the years when you interviewed developers back in the day, or my, even my like recently. question would literally be to them, who knows best about your game, you or the fans? And Jake Solomon is the first person that ever said the fans. Mm -hmm. And he continued to say something along the lines of like, I have no grounds to get defensive about people criticizing my design decisions because it's a game I'm making for them. And that to me is just kind of insane because that draws a line in the sand between making something you're really passionate about or making something that you think is going to sell or just mm -hmm. like please an audience, which this is a business that is very important, right? But at the same time, there has to be an interesting balance. And he is just so far onto one side of that, that discussion. It's very surprising to hear that. Yeah, normally I would say maybe that's just a PR response. Maybe, uh, but he wanna, sounded very candid. He did, yeah, he no, speaking. but he is. Throughout the years, he's always been kind of saying that. Um, he said when they first started, because to reboot XCOM on 360 and then, uh, you know, with the Enemy Within, it was a huge, it was a slog. Like, uh, there's, I think it was a feature on Polygon a while ago about, like, just the stress it put on him for, like, over 10 years between pre-production and finally releasing it. 
And he was saying the entire time there was also the fear that fans of the original XCOMs yeah. back in the day, the isometric ones, would be just hate him. Right. Um, and maybe that played a part in his subsequent, you know, uh, being beholden to fans. But I mean, they're certainly responsible for him being able to do what he continues to do, right? Mm-hmm. So why would he want to screw that up? Like, that's, that's easy to sympathize with. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, I just, I feel like there has to be a, a better balance there. And I don't think that his work shows a lack of that balance. Uh, but his answer, yeah, again, it just made me, I don't know. He didn't, he didn't seem to like see both sides. Yeah. It was a bit of an anomaly. Um, but you know, like I think this stuff's worth talking about and, uh, it's a great interview. You should go read it, uh, between yeah. Scott Butterworth and Jake Solomon. It's on GameSpot. It's called, uh, XCOM director on why some AAA games fail. Um, it's pretty insightful in terms of, uh, you know, AAA development, developing these, uh, huge budget games uh, for, you know, like, you know, these huge sales. Uh, but it's worth going to uh, to read, especially in the wake of Mass Effect Andromeda, which a lot of people criticize in terms of its uh, its release state. Um, it is improved now uh, in some aspects. There was the patch that released, and it helped with some of the animations, those eye things, uh, technical issues, stutters, and whatnot. So if you have been holding off on Mass Effect Andromeda, maybe go check out some of our coverage on that and see if it's worth going back to. In the meantime, let us know what you think about this discussion. Uh, we do have the Twitch chat and the YouTube chat up right here. But also, if you're watching this uh, later on on YouTube or GameSpot, uh, let us know what you think about AAA development and uh, maybe what your takeaways are from that Jake Solomon interview, if you get the chance to read it. 